In 2018, when the icon Joseph Fares took to the stage to boldly tell viewers of the Game Awards to fuck the Oscars, before going on to reveal some gameplay of his team at Hazelight's latest co-op focused title, A Way Out, it was certainly a hell of a way to get people to notice you, and it worked. Even with the shroud of the often condemned EA Games looming as a publisher for the title, A Way Out released and it was a real surprise for so many players, including myself, bringing a truly unique co-op experience that many had not had the pleasure of experiencing since the masterpiece that was Portal 2 graced us with its creation. Returning to the Game Awards again in 2020, the team at Hazelight revealed their latest successor to the Prison Escape title with another co-op only game, It Takes Two looking to present a similar experience to the one found with the previous 2018 title. In Fallout 4 fashion, the game was released just a few short months after the reveal, which is how it should always be done for the record, with It Takes Two seeking to get Fares and team a home run with three great co-op titles in a row, and it is a task they have certainly not failed. Thank you! Oh! Oh! What is that? I'm Dr. Haki, worldwide bestseller and an expert on love! Your daughter purchased me. She was lucky. I was the last copy because I was selling the best. <laughs> I've kept millions of couples and now I will help you two to get together again. May and Cody face an imminent divorce, a divorce they find themselves having to explain to their only child, Rose, with the explanation not exactly going to plan as Rose finds herself confused at the entire prospect of her parents separating. After a bit of magic involving the tears of Rose, some clay and wooden figures, and a magic book on how to fix love, May and Cody find themselves trapped within the said figures, with their only guidance being the sporadic teachings of a now talking book that seeks to teach them how to fix the relationship. The simple premise sets the tale in motion well enough, with May and Cody navigating their home and their areas that encompass it, albeit from the perspective of their newly found minuscule point of view. From the ongoing war between squirrel and wasps in the garden, to the frozen landscapes of a snow globe lying on the mantelpiece, the entire journey has an incredible resemblance to a Pixar film mixed with an 80s rom-com like When Harry Met Sally, with each chapter presenting wacky new characters to work as friend or foe to our two leads, while equally allowing for some comedic moments to come through not only the side characters, but the fantastic performances of our two leads Cody and May. The narrative arc that Cody and May journey on is certainly a simple one, potentially to a fall, as the game looks at the complicated aspects of divorce is incredibly one note, putting the entire ordeal down to something as basic as learn to love again. Divorce is a far more complex affair, and it is a shame that it takes to never once decides to dip into these complexities too much, opting to keep the ordeal as light as possible, resulting in a serviceable yet cute narrative that ultimately is enough to ensure you are always presented with a goal in mind between each of the game's several chapters. That being said, there are moments in it takes two that really struck home with me, with discussions around creativity, passion, as well as what it means to love one another. And even with the bare bones narrative, it will be the gameplay here that keeps you hooked from chapter to chapter, with each level seeming to only expand upon the creative ways that the team have implemented into this co-op title. As you'd expect with the game being two players only via online or local co-op, both players must choose between playing as Cody or May, with your screen being split in the middle allowing you to view both perspectives regardless of playing locally or online. While at first having so much of your screen real estate being taken up by your co-op partner can be a tad distracting, this feature becomes essential in your journey with the entire game always being focused on the fact that it is a co-op title, with each chapter presenting new and incredibly creative ways to push you and your partner to work together to conquer the various platforming challenges. Each of the chapters typically begins the same way. You land in the area and are presented with your new given ability for the levels ahead, with each player given a small yet game-changing tool that can only be effective in conjunction with your partner's ability. For example, early in the game Cody is given a set of nails that can be thrown and called back in the fashion of Kratos' axe, while May is provided with a hammer that can be used to swing on the nails or hammer in buttons. Each of the tools has its moments to be used early in the chapter to establish their benefits, yet quickly forgoes this and provides challenge after challenge to force you to both work together, while always thinking outside the box with what your tools can do in the given chapter. While each chapter does discard the previous tool, the number of creative ideas that a team at Hazelight squeeze out of each and every tool you use allows the end of the chapter to be the perfect time to move on to a new and fresh idea. At the game's core, it takes two as a platformer through and through opting for a far less cinematic affair than what was found in A Way Out and it is all the better for it. While the use of the tools is of course used in some of the more static puzzles you will face, the majority of your time with it takes to is going to be spent platforming, often while needing the aid of your partner to assist you in said movement. Due to the nature of the game, there are times in which you are not needing the assistance of your partner to platform, which can result in you sitting at the end of a path waiting for your other players to catch up. Thankfully, these moments are few and far between, with the vast majority of the game always relying on your skills to work together. And to spoil how the game keeps this fresh route would be a huge disservice to the title, with there being so many moments in which both I and my co-op partner were blown away by it all, often culminating in a challenging yet fair boss fight to bookend each chapter. Playing the entire game with my girlfriend, we were perhaps the perfect candidates to play the game, yet with her not being the most experienced in gaming, it was a joy to see how well it takes to be controlled for both of us. 
With your main movement consisting of jumping, sprinting and dashing, the game never boggles itself down with complicated moves yet equally manages to keep the challenging engaging. As well as this, with May and Cody both having different tasks from one another, there is already an incentive for us to replay our lengthy 15 hour journey looking to experience the playstyle that we missed on our first playthrough. There are also the bonus mini games found in each of the chapters, ranging from a game of whack-a-mole all the way to a full game of chess with us only finding just over half of the mini games on extensive playtime. That lengthy runtime was certainly a shock, especially when compared to the pretty brief nature of a way out, and this could potentially be an issue for those trying to find the time to play for the game with a partner online. Finding the time that both you and a friend have to play for the entire game may prove a challenge, yet I cannot say that I was ever once bored with It Takes Two throughout the runtime, and by the time the credits rolled I was generally sad to see the back of it. Yet for those who are playing online and may be worried about time commitments between you and a buddy, the game once again introduces the friends pass like what was seen with A Way Out, allowing you to play the entire game with someone online even if they do not own the game, and there really is no catch here. It is truly amazing to see that often greed ridden EA understand that being a co-op only title, that pass allows a huge incentive for those unsure to check it out with a friend that potentially split the cost to make it an absolute bargain of a purchase, even though it already is. Your relationship is now more in sync. Can you feel it? Huh? Tell me you feel it. Come on. Tell me you feel it. Huh? 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 If there was one word to describe it takes to, it would be charming. The entire journey me and my co-op partner went through was at times silly, hilarious, whimsical, tragic, gorgeous, and above all else, it was always fun. Not since the days of Portal 2 have I been so blown away by how well a co-op focused title committed to that idea of partnership so fully never once being afraid to present the wackiest ideas it has up its sleeves. It takes two and may lack a mature narrative to allow the simple tale to really nail an emotional landing, yet what it lacks in storytelling it more than makes up for in gameplay, presentation and fantastic performances from all involved, making for one of my favourite gaming experiences I have had in recent memory and one I am desperate to revisit as soon as possible.